So I was so excited about this film because I read the, the description and yep. the fact that it, you filmed it on the iPhone 6S. Yes. Um, did, was that, I'm guessing that was strategic? Yeah. And um, what, what made you want to do that? Well, the movie came together really fast and so, um, you know, we knew the success was coming out. I think it came out like October or September. And, um, you know, when it came out, we uh, were just really excited to try to be the first filmmakers to kind of shoot with it. And so um, we came up with the story to try to do it about an Uber driver. It was just really cool because, um, you know, it, it really allowed us to put the phone in a lot of angles that a normal camera normally wouldn't have been. You know, uh, typically when you shoot a movie in a car, I've worked on, I PA'd a lot, I've worked on a lot of like bigger sets. And so what they do is they have this thing called a process trailer. So it's like this old car, just huge little like, trailer on the end and they sit the car on top but then normally you're able to put lights and tripods and like you know and you, and you follow the car around the city then you gotta like rent police officers and shut down streets it's just like very expensive to shoot that way but because we were shooting indie with no money um, we had to figure out a way to like get that process trailer feel but you know with, with no money and so what we ended up doing was uh bringing the iphones to the car design and so we would do full takes with like two cameras like on the hood, like one kind of cutting off at the right right of frame of the driver and the one on the passenger side or one all the way on the front of the hood or one below by the wheel to get some cool B-roll shots and one on top of the car looking out to the city. And so it just really allowed us a lot more flexibility because we didn't even have to have an operator standing outside working it. And what we would do is we set it up, hit record, I'd lay in the back seat, <laughs> the sound guy would lay in the trunk and then the actors would just go. So it was really cool. Yeah. Or something? How many iPhones did you we had use? two. two. So, okay. yeah, so we shot on two, and so, like I said, before every take, we, uh, and we shot it like a play almost. Um, we shot like real Uber rides, so our driver would be set up at the start point with nobody in the car. We would go, like, check the framing, um, hit record. I would lay in the back seat. <laughs> the driver, the sound mixer would lay in the trunk, and then our driver, Dory Missick, would literally pull up to the next destination. The rider would get in the car, and then they would drive for like five or ten minutes to the real destination. And the dialogue would just take place organically as if it was a real Uber ride. Mm -hmm. So we would do like, we shot in six days. And so we had like, we did two rides a night. And so we had about six hours to kind of get each ride um, kind of filmed. But uh, it was really cool. Did you know the story beforehand? Um, did you take some Uber rides to kind of get a feel? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I don't drive in LA. So I, so, uh, I take Uber a lot. And um, yeah, just you meet some very interesting characters. And I, I was just always just curious of like, you know, you kind of are meeting these guys in these random points in their life, and I've been in a couple rides with these guys who just seem like they're having horrible days and very antisocial, and I've ridden in cars where these guys are like overly talkative. So I just really wanted to try to like dissect a, a driver's personal relationships kind of through his relationships with these different people that kind of ride around in this uh, in, in this car with him. Some of the challenges, um, obviously, you, you were had to lie down in the, the right. back of the car. Um, but what do you think also are some of the benefits to this type of, you know, using a phone instead of, you know, something yeah. like this? Well, some of the challenges were uh, there was no monitor, so literally, I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of, I had to direct by listening because I'm laying in the back seat, and you know, the actors are like right in front of me, but I can't pop up and watch because I'd be in the shot. So that was like really hard. Um, just shooting at night is just hard because your body wants to wake up during the day and like check emails and do things and so we were getting like maybe one or two hours of sleep <laughs> during the shoot um yeah that was extremely hard and um the fact that we shot it with no script it was really a uh, shot with an outline and so it was my first time working like that and so just not knowing what you were going to get and kind of hoping that it would work out in the end but uh, i edited too so i i tried, tried my best to kind of make sure that even if the actors didn't feel comfortable with their take, like, okay, we're not gonna use at least that one part that you didn't feel comfortable with. Then, you know, I'll try to intercut all the takes in between each other to try to, you know, make it make sense narratively. Um, and some of the advantages, I mean, in terms of like being a young filmmaker, like being able to shoot Gorilla, you know, like if a cop ran up on us, we were like, hey man, well, I'm talking on my phone. What are you talking about? <laughs> we're not shooting anything. Um, <laughs> uh, that was cool. Um, the fact that the phones uh, were 128 gigs, you know, a lot of times, even with the cards, the memory cards, even in the real camera, you know, a lot of times they don't even go up that big. You're, you're dealing with 32 gigs, um, 48 gigs or whatever, but we had two 128 gig uh, iPhone successes. One was a six plus, one was a regular success. And um, we literally were, I mean, I dumped every night just because I was paranoid, but we could have probably went through the whole shoot without having to dump. 
um, just because the, the way the phones encode is in a, the H.264 codec, so it's not like huge files. Um, another challenging thing was after you do a take on the iPhone 6S, because we use the Filmic Pro app, and when you're shooting 4K, so if we did a 10 minute take, it would take 10 minutes for it to render. And so like this little green bar comes across and it says that it's processing. And if you like plug the phone in while it's doing that, you lose the footage. If you like click on it and like try to check a call, it'll, so it was like trying to troubleshoot, trying to figure that out while we were like sitting here with actors trying to figure it out. But, um, but it was great, I, I, would, I would do it again. And how do you think this would change from like, filmmaking? Well, for other um, or, yeah. you know, filmmakers the, that the don't big, have access to. No, that's, no, no. The, the biggest reason why we shot the movie with the iPhone success, and, it, it, and again, it's probably less that specific phone, just more about just shooting with the phone that shot in 4K. I shot a short film back in 2010 in Atlanta when the red camera just came out, and I remember how much of a big deal the 4K option was. We literally like were scrambling. We went to Alpharetta. Uh, Mariette, like we went to all around Georgia trying to find a 4K red camera. And so like for five years later, for you be able to do it on a phone, it just like blew my mind. And our thing was, if we can shoot this movie with, these, with, with this phone, and obviously Tangerine, and there have been films that have done it already, but our thing was, if we can do this, specifically being filmmakers of color, we kind of represent underrepresented groups. We just wanted to make it more accessible for the average person because I think, and this is how I was, you know, I wasn't a film student. I didn't, you know, I was an athlete my whole life and I always looked at filmmaking like, oh man, this is like, you need millions of dollars to make movies and have car crashes and people flying out of helicopters and all this other stuff. But I think with the iPhone, it really, hopefully, the thing I really hope is that young people really embrace filmmaking and don't think that it's so much, it's something that they can't have access to. Um, because you can literally shoot with what you have in your pocket. And, you know, we had a couple accessories, but even the accessories didn't, didn't add up until maybe a couple thousand dollars, you know what I mean? Like the price of renting an Alexa for a day, we were able to buy all the iPhone accessories, you know, the Filmic Pro app, $10. The B-Script Pro rig is like $300. The uh, Moondog Labs anamorphic lens that Tangerine shot on as well, $140, you know what I mean? Our lights were LED panel lights, like 1600 and the, the section cups were like a hundred bucks. Literally, that was all our equipment that we shot the movie with, and, and, I, and obviously the two iPhone successes. Um, but so, so for, the, for the price of you running equipment on like a major shoot, we were able to buy all this equipment and use it again for future shoots. And so the biggest thing is just, you know, guys, like it's not as difficult as you think. Obviously you gotta be a student and like learn story and watch a lot of movies, but in terms of having access to the same equipment that you can shoot a full feature length film on, you can do it tomorrow, you know what I mean? And just, just embrace it. And it's really more about the story, less about what camera you use. Mm -hmm. And so do you think, I know you kept this one um, in the car, but do you yeah. think you could, you yeah. could do other maybe action film with this? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Because again, like the iPhone just gives you so much more flexibility in terms of angles. Like I mean, we had the car, we had the, we had the camera on the, on the gas pedal, on the steering wheel, on the rear view mirror, you know what I mean? Like you can't put a big old Alexa up there because it almost would be, the lens would almost be touching his face. So do you think you um, can be more creative? You can be more creative, you know what I mean? It's just because it gives you more, way more flexibility. And then again, being young filmmakers, a lot of times we can't afford permits and all these other things that come with these big productions. So you can gorilla shoot a lot more with uh, the iPhone as well. So what other projects do you have uh, coming up? Are you going to do, do you plan to do another one on the success? Yeah, um, I, um, it's, it's crazy. You know, I was here back in 2012, my first feature, uh, the last fall. Um, I'm shooting my next feature in April 11th. It's kind of a road trip movie, so it takes place a lot in the car. So we are going to utilize the iPhone uh, again. Um, I also work in te television, so I got this uh, episode of this docu-series uh, called Being on uh, this artist, Michelle Williams, who used to be in Destiny's Child. Um, that's airing March 26. And you know, just a lot of different things. Um, I'm really interested in virtual reality. I'm shooting a uh, boxing short film in VR with uh, Shane Mosley in a couple of weeks. So really excited about that. And just, you know, just want to keep pushing the medium forward and just making it, helping to make it more accessible for uh, the average filmmaker. Mm -hmm. So are you excited about the AR, VR um, here at South By? Yeah, Are you yeah. gonna go check out those, those events? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I think, uh, <laughs> the thing about virtual reality I think is incredible is that uh, it's so untapped, you know what I mean? Like, and that the possibilities are literally endless. I mean, imagine a horror movie 
do VR and you hear a sound and you write, you look and something's like running at you, like that would freak me out. Um, you know, even just trying to think about like a full-length feature film that takes place in virtual reality, I think, uh, I think the possibilities are endless. Samsung just came out with this camera. If you're familiar with virtual reality, it's like eight cameras in one on like a rig and so you have to stitch all the footage together in post. It's just a very tedious <coughs> process, but what I'm seeing at South By is a lot of the cameras now, they're making them so they stitch it automatically. And that saves literally <laughs> like months of time because uh, it's literally, you have to go frame by frame and stitch eight images together for one frame of footage. Um, and so I just think moving forward, hopefully it just becomes more accessible. The um, virtual reality rigs are like only like $100 now and a couple hundred bucks. Samsung, I think if you buy a phone, they give you the VR rig for free and you can use the phone to put in the headset to actually watch what you need to watch. So I think it's going to be incredible and I can't wait to hopefully be at the forefront of it. Yeah, it seems like you're really innovative in using different technology. Yeah, yeah so that's, that's really great. So um, what have been your favorite films so far? I know you went to the one last night. Yeah, I've only, only seen one other film since I've been here. Um, it's called Gina the Joneses. Really great movie about just uh, the dynamics of different women. Um, to kind of deal with the tragedy and uh, not nah, look amazing. I'm looking forward to seeing more. You know, we're here until Thursday, so once uh, our schedule settles down a little bit, we're going to see a lot more stuff.